Hello, welcome to my channel, my name is Philip, and today I would like to show you how to animate hands correctly in Maya and what are the differences between F key and I key animation. So let's get started. There are actually two techniques on how you can approach the hand animation. F key, it's a forward kinematic and the I key, it's a inverse kinematic. Right now I will show you what are the differences and how to approach it, okay? And like when to use which option. So let's jump to my right now. And as you can see, this is, this is our character rig, uh, Doctor Strange. You can download it in the description below. So we have two options available for us as an animators to use. Mm, the left one, uh, the screen left uh, arm is set up on an F key and the right one on I key. And the difference is that, for example, one hand, you can animate this through the rotation, okay, like this. And another one through the translation, which is, you know, you're just grabbing the palm controller and just translating it and also manipulating elbow with this additional controller. So for example, like you can create this pose. Okay, so it's a little bit different. The left one, which is F key, F key means forward kinematic and it's because the motion, it moves forward in like an incorrect order. Okay, uh, imagine there are like bones in your skeleton. Even if we are manipulating our hands in the three-dimensional space, we are still moving through the rotations, okay? So that's the most, I would say, realistic approach on how you can manage animation, like in real life. And another one is a little bit like a, you know, shortcut for us, for an animators to, to create a movement, which you're just, you know, grabbing palm. And if you want, for example, have really subtle movement, if you want to really control the palm movement, you will use this technique. Okay, and this technique is I key, which is inverse kinematic. And if it sounds complicated at the beginning, then you can approach it like forward, which moves like, a, you know, through the order and inverse, which you are just grabbing hand and you're inversing this natural order of things. Okay, so we, we went through that. Hopefully right now it's clear and we can get to the, another uh, stage. So, for example, what are the differences between each movement? I created two poses for our character, from the T pose to more relaxed position. And at the beginning, there is no difference, you know, like on the blocking, if you are starting uh, your animation, there is no difference. But for example, take a look how it translates through the movement. Okay, so of course the left one, screen left one arm looks more believable. If we, for example, select his palm, and apply the motion trail, it will keep a nice arc movement, okay? If you study the 12 principles of animation, there is even like a arc principle, okay? We want to create a, an arc because our movement is actually based on the joint rotation, okay? That's why it's happening. And for example, let's select this one and also apply the motion trail. We are achieving the same pose at the end, but the movement looks totally different, okay? So that's why it's actually hard to use eye key hands in, let's say, believable movement all the time, because it will create this linear interpolation between two poses. You might think, well, so why, why we actually want to use it? So take a look how, for example, legs works right now of our character. I will just turn off the motion trail and take a look. The best example are legs because actually whenever we are moving our character, our legs may, are maintaining the same position, okay? So they're not like clipping through the plane. They're just keeping the position over the surface, which is much, much easier for us. So it's really important to be aware of that kind of differences and to actually approach your animation with the correct planning before you're, you're actually starting animating. But don't worry, 
you can actually switch those uh, setups during your animation even. And here there are like little crosses. I mean, every rig has a little bit different controls. But for example, if you select this, there is an F key and I key blend. So for example, we can switch it and it will go back to our T pose position. Okay, so we could actually animate this arm still with a different setup. Okay, so the same you can apply to this side also from 10 value to the zero and right now you know we have our old setup with an F key and yes you can also apply it to these legs and it will show you the difference okay so for example right now one leg we have it we have it on I key another one is an F key just imagine how complicated operation would be just to maintain the old position of the leg Right, we would have to rotate three controllers simultaneously just to keep this leg on place. Which is fine for just maintaining maybe one pose, but just imagine you want to keep this position for longer than 10 frames, it will be really complicated, okay? So let's create a box right now. So the easiest approach is we mostly want to use F key for hands, right? So just rotation and I key for legs because legs have contact with the ground for most of the time and F key set up for arms because it's more realistic approach to animating arms. Although if there is any contact with the arm, so if, for example, if your character want to touch an object like this box, it will be a nightmare to animate it through the F key, through this, because as we already discussed, it will be hard to maintain the position, okay? Like just over the surface and to avoid intersections. But with the I key system, we can actually select this arm, just move it here to the correct position and we can just keep it, okay? So this is like a main difference. Whenever your character is reaching out for something, if it has some contact with the table, with the prop, uh, even if it's touching its own body, then most of the time you want to use an I key. Even if we are moving our character, this hand is maintaining the position. It's important to remember that on the I key system, you have also option of follow, okay? So for example, uh, right now it's on zero, but you can actually place it to 10, it means that right now it will follow our character. So sometimes we want to use it in more dynamic shots, but in most situations you want to keep this on the zero. So your body animation doesn't impact your palm movement. Okay, so if we would like to create this animation of touching the object, we can start from an F key. And let's try to reach out for this box. So here, this is our first pose, and this is our you know, like last pose. And you can try to maybe have some more realistic. Realistic pose here. Maybe also we we'll create some breakdown. Try to keep it closer to avoid intersections as much as possible. And then here we want to use a different system. So you can actually create a key here, okay, on this uh, parameter. And also let's create a key here. So we have right now two keys, and this one can put it on the value 10 which means right now it will completely switch to the I key system. To create like the seamless blend, I would suggest to, for example, use more than 
just one frame for a change. You can do that like this, okay? And that's fine in some cases. But if you want to achieve softer change, we probably would like to smooth it. And you can actually find this parameter by selecting this object and you can see here we have an animation okay and we have two keys on f key blend and right now it lasts just one frame we can extend it for example it will last three frames and that's how we just change the setup you don't want to go more than for example three or five frames because that will also impact the amount of control that you have okay right now during these three frames we will actually have to animate your arms for two setups so what i would suggest is to try to keep these two poses as close as possible and then try to just make a, a little bit longer switch so instead of just one frame maybe two or three frames and that will be fine already here it's pretty good okay we can see that it's smooth movement there is no popping through just one frame and that's fine so hopefully it helps you to understand what are the differences so just remember to take some time to analyze your shot to make a proper planning before starting animating and um, it's especially tricky because from my experience people are creating poses and there is no interpolation between those poses so people are just animating you know like they're, they're moving their characters even with the wrong setup and you can't see the results yet like you can't see the the difference because you're just setting a pose and as we discussed setting the pose doesn't make a huge difference but actually moving between those poses will be completely different in those two setups so um, later on if students are just you know starting splining then you will see completely like different animation if they are using the wrong setup and in the studio environment there are tools to for example keep your animation and just switch between f key and i key because yeah you have like a ton of scripts but when you are starting alone at your home you will be just you know you will have to for example rebuild your animation from scratch that's painful for sure so that's why i really encourage you to make some planning before animating. Great. Thanks for watching. If you like this episode, then press the like button, subscribe. And if you want to get an access to that kind of rigs, you can just sign up to our Facebook group where we are releasing that kind of characters every single month. And also we are doing the animation challenges. So if you are just, you know, alone at your cave, hustling on your animation, you can join an amazing community of animators and you can challenge your skills and actually receive some feedback from others. Great. Thanks and see you on another episode. Bye.